Hello, all you beautiful people. Thank you for joining us while we talk about one of our favorite cocktails from one of our favorite places, the zombie from Trader Sam's at the Disneyland Hotel. Pay no mind to the neighbor's dog. This is going to be a good one. We love Trader Sam's, the ambience, the food, the drinks, and everything included. It's just an awesome place to be. And one of our favorite things to order is a classic tiki cocktail, the zombie. Now, we didn't know quite how much alcohol was in this thing until we bought all the stuff to make it ourselves. And that's what we're going to do today. We've tried this once before. We were missing one ingredient that turned out to be a key. So tonight, after the kids go to bed, we're going to give it attempt number two. Come along with us as we make one of our favorite cocktails and hopefully you'll learn whether or not you want to make it too. And just like that, it's nighttime, the kids are in bed, and I'm sitting behind a disturbing amount of liquor for people who really don't drink that often. Babe, how long do you think it's been since we've had our last actual cocktail? Maybe a month? Cassie's right over here. She doesn't like the camera, but she doesn't mind giving her input. What brought this on? Because this was not my idea. <laughs> so, the Velvet Falernum is the ingredient we were missing the last time. And we tried to do a little bit more bitters, a little bit more absinthe, and it, it didn't work out. Did you know that absinthe is basically black licorice liqueur? Because I didn't. It's made with fennel and anise. Now, I love black licorice. You do do not. Not, not, no, not the no. Not the best. No. So that zombie didn't, didn't turn out so well. It just didn't taste like a zombie. I didn't mind the black light version. It just didn't taste like it was supposed to. Did you know that the original recipe for zombies included cranberries, but then they had to remove them because it would get in your head? <laughs> in your head, eh, eh, zombie. So this is everything that we're using. If you want to just skip straight to fancy pants footage of a quick distilled recipe for this, head to the, uh, the the chapter markers down below. But this is live time, so let's do it. Let's start with the booze. I got I got everything that we need. Read off my ingredients for me, uh, and let, let's start mixing here. So we need an ounce and a half of Bacardi 8. Um, we're gonna use our, our fantastic little Jeff Granito glasses. Let's see that. Ounce and a half, you said? Yes. Okay, ounce and a half. I like this little gyre because it has measured marks on the inside for me. Okay, so ounce and a half of Bacardi 8. Let's do the Appleton Estate Jamaican rum next. Uh, ounce and a half. Ounce and a half. Did, did did I mention this was not the cheapest cocktail in the world? <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> is that ounce and a half for this one? Yeah. All right. But neither of the zombies are true, Sam, so it all balances out. I mean, we're going to have to actually do the math and see how many cocktails we're going to get out of this. Yeah. Okay, so an ounce and a half of the Appleton Estate. Notice how much liquid is going into these cups without any mixers. All right, now we're on to the... This is the overproof. This is a 69% alcohol per volume uh, user beware. This is called Plantation OFTD. Now the overproof stuff, we found a recipe online, link to that YouTube video is down in the description if you wanna see the original recipe that we're following here. But um, that person who's much more knowledgeable in tiki cocktails than we are, said that the overproof that Trader Sam's uses isn't really available in California. Super hard to find, darn near impossible. But he recommended this because it was created by actually a group of tiki cocktail expert bartenders. And, um, and he waxed pretty poetic about this stuff. So, I mean, it smells good as far as... It smells strong. As far as yeah. overproof rum goes, it's going to do the job. What do we need of this? An ounce. A full ounce. A full ounce. Super. If I'm not, that might... That might... Uh, I don't know if you're supposed to pour that after like a floater. It's not a floater. No. Okay. No. I watched that video. He pours everything in, shakes okay. it up real good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you might want a floater on top. <laughs> Moving on to the the, the velvet flannel, which will be the first time we use this ingredient. Fourth of an ounce. A quarter of an ounce. That's all we need. A little bit goes a long way, apparently, because it was definitely not right before. There we go. Quarter of an ounce. Don't do what we're doing. 
Don't let your limes go bad and not buy new ones. Use fresh lime juice. It's going to be better, but we're working with what we got. Would you say three quarters of an ounce? Yes. Okay. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. And there we are. Three quarters of an ounce of lime. And then what's our other juice? Uh, grapefruit juice. That we do have. We have some fresh goodness for the grapefruit juice here. Uh, would you say quarter of it? Just a quarter of an ounce? Yeah. I really like grapefruit. I kind of wish there was more in there. But if that's all it's calling for, then that's all we'll use. That should be all we need to squeeze a quarter of an ounce of this, right? Almost exactly a quarter of an ounce. <laughs> First take of that. Okay, and then two dashes of what the bartender called Herbistura. And then after great googly moogling this for too long, I realized that that was a word that he made up, so you're not gonna find it out there. It is equal parts Angostura aromatic bitters and the aforementioned absinthe. Uh, I forget what absinthe we bought. I'll put a picture of it on the screen. There you go. That's the absinthe that we bought. It cost us like five bucks because we lucked out and found a little airplane bottle at Total Wine. That's the one thing we didn't have to buy a full bottle of. And the reason that we didn't buy a full bottle of it is because we just knew that we needed to take equal parts of that and bitters and two dashes. That's all it needs. You still need the cinnamon syrup and the grenadine. I, I, I forgot ingredients, mm -hmm. and those are in the fridge. Mm -hmm. And that is where jump cuts come in handy. Magic. Okay, so we made our own cinnamon syrup and grenadine. Um, specifically, you made yeah. our own cinnamon <laughs> syrup and <laughs> grenadine. How did you make the grenadine? Uh, it's just one-to-one -one, uh, pomegranate juice and uh, sugar. And you make like a simple syrup, so you just cook it on the stove. Okay, so if you did a cup of sugar and a cup of pomegranate juice, yeah. Cook it on the stove till it melts together and becomes a liquid and toss it in the fridge, right? Yeah. All right, how much homemade grenadine do we need? You can buy the stuff in the stores, but after reading all the ingredients that are included, it just didn't seem like it would be as good because there was there, there was so many more ingredients than sugar and pomegranate. Uh, Palm Wonderful, right? We found like the Safeway pomegranate juice store brand okay yeah. so what whatever your standard pomegranate juice is as mm -hmm. long as it's not the cocktail just yeah. just pomegranate juice how much of this do we need uh an eighth of an ounce an eighth of an ounce that's like yeah. not even worth measuring almost okay so there's our it doesn't feel like enough okay no. just a little no. eighth of an ounce plus a plus a, a tiny splash half a splash and then our cinnamon syrup same thing mm -hmm. simple syrup and you toss some cinnamon sticks that in, right? That one was, uh, had some, yeah, you had to steep cinnamon sticks and then make it a simple, uh, simple syrup. So okay. it's better to Google a recipe. <laughs> okay, so to make, to make your cinnamon simple syrup. Super easy though, it was um, very easy. Toss that into the Googler and, and look up your favorite person uh, yeah. slash recipe. Uh, how much how much of that do we need? Uh, fourth of an ounce. A quarter of an ounce, more than the grenadine, that's interesting. And there we are. That's that's everything. That's everything right there. Through the continued magic of jump cuts, we now have a cup full of ice, and we're just gonna fill this up to the top. And normally, would you call it a cocktail? No, because you gotta shake it up to make it proper. Toss it in here, shake it up. I'm sorry, everybody out there. This is loud, and I usually do a dance, ask her. You don't get the dance, I'm sitting down today. But the more you shake it up, the better. I've found that it's hard to overshake things, but as long as you shake it until your shaker is nice and frosty and, and darn near hurts your hands with the cold, that's kind of what you're looking for. There we go. And now, oh, this is the money shot. We should get it close to the camera. Here you go. That 
is one homemade Trader Sam zombie. There's one thing we're missing. You're supposed to garnish with mint. Where's the mint? At the grocery store. <laughs> That's not where it's supposed to be. We don't have any mint, but uh, we'll leave the mint for this time. When you're making it at home, toss a little mint on. Get fancy with it, get fun. Um, we don't need it here. <laughs> garnish with a, with a grapefruit. Um, I'm gonna try it and then you're gonna try it. We're gonna see if it's worth making another one. That is unbelievably different than the last time without the falernum and the too much yeah. absinthe. That made a huge difference. I don't know if that is the Traitor Sam zombie. Don't, <laughs> don't tell anybody. I'm more of a Tangaroa cooler guy. She's, she's the zombie gal. So you be, you be the judge here. It's close, but the one at Trader Sam's is sweeter. Sweeter? Sweeter. Interesting. Maybe yeah, we should maybe big. we should try. It's very strong. <laughs> so much rum in this oh drink. Um, let's try another one. Okay. Maybe more. And let's add more grenadine. Yeah. And maybe back the booze off a little bit. This is a lot. There's no backing the booze off with this recipe. Yeah, so okay. <laughs> Next one I'm gonna make for me. I'm gonna add a little bit more grenadine. I'm gonna add more grapefruit juice because I, I love grapefruit and we'll see if we can kind of balance these flavors out, add a little bit of sweetness to see if we can kind of tweak it. Um, let's just cut to the fancy footage of this next cocktail being made. Pretend that there's a little bit of mint on there. It really would finish it off nicely. Okay, let's try this one. You ready? Yep. All right. That's better. Yeah. That is, for my taste, much better. So what I did was I kicked up the grenadine a little bit. I kicked up the cinnamon syrup just a little bit. And then I added, instead of a quarter ounce of grapefruit juice, three quarter ounces of grapefruit juice. I like grapefruit juice. It might be a little sweet now. Maybe a little too sweet. I think it might be able to go to like, what was it, a quarter ounce of grenadine? And I went to three quarters of an ounce? Yeah. Something like that. I think it could settle with like a half an ounce of grenadine and be good, but you tell me. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. It's very different. It's very different. But it's almost too sweet. So a little less grenadine or a little more booze. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> this this is primed and ready for your floater. Yeah. Right. That's that's what we're doing. Okay. Oh, so no, that first one. No floaters in zombies. Not necessary. No. Yeah, this is a much more rum heavy taste. And this is a lot more citrusy. And I Which I prefer. You do. I think when you look at Trader Sam's... I understand like, that that's not Trader Sam's no, zombie, but, but the, given that, that given one, how much I like the Tangaroa coolers and the flavor profiles that I typically prefer, the, basically anything with a grapefruit in it, like... The grenadine heavier one is more like the Trader Sam's zombie, though, because the Trader Sam's zombie... It's a little is, sweeter. It's a little sweeter and... Well, it's not it's, quite as rum forward. Yeah. There's plenty of it in there. Yeah. We've had... Many a, uh, <laughs> let's call it a slight stagger ar around the park uh, and downtown Disney after a trip to Trader Sam's. Here you go. The zombies at Trader Sam's are not lacking in the alcohol department. But I think this cuts that a little bit. And for a lightweight like me, that's great. Uh, if you're not a lightweight and you love yourself some dark rum, stick with that original recipe. It's fantastic. But either way, I wasn't keeping a running tally. 
I'll put a running tally up on the screen, so you're gonna know how much this cocktail cost us. <laughs> I'm not gonna know the exact amount until we edit this whole thing together. It's like a $140 cocktail. But then you have to do the math of if each zombie is what, $18? You can do the math <laughs> and tell us how many zombies this is gonna make us. 700. 700 <laughs> zombies, definitive, <laughs> done. We are now gonna go have a wonderful evening. You do the same with whatever part of the day it is for you. And maybe we'll see you at Trader Sam's the next time that we're there, getting the real thing. But until then, I think that will suffice. Make some cocktails, have some fun, as long as you have the cupboard space, because this is, this is gonna take up quite a bit of it. Like, forward, share, subscribe, all the things. Go have a drink. We'll see you next time.